be about river erosion. River erosion starts with runoff. Runoff is any water that runs over the Earth's surface, most of that being rivers. Now, runoff could come from two sources, either groundwater coming up from underground or precipitation falling from above the ground. Once that water runs on Earth's surface, it is runoff and it can form a river. Now, two factors affect runoff initially, the amount of rain that is falling in an area and how permeable the soil is where that rain is falling. The more permeable the soil, the less runoff you'll have. If the soil is impermeable, for example, like a rain jacket on the left over there, then a lot of water will run off because it cannot soak into the soil. Now there's other factors that affect runoff as well, other than the amount of rain falling and how permeable the soil is. The slope of the land also affects the runoff. So the more gentle the slope, the slower the runoff will be and the more time it will have to soak into the ground before moving further downhill. The steeper the slope, the faster the water will be moving and the less time it will have to soak in the ground. So gentle slopes will have a less runoff and steep slopes will have more runoff. Vegetation can also affect runoff as well. The more vegetation you have, the less runoff you'll have for two reasons. One, plant roots will soak up water, allowing it to not be into the river. Two, the plants themselves will stop the rain from hitting the ground in the first place because the rain will hit the leaves of the plants and may evaporate in the process. Now this has effects for erosion as well. Uh, the less runoff you have, the less erosion. So plants are double with that factor. Now there are four types of erosion that happen with water that don't have anything to do with rivers or with oceans. And those four types of erosion are rain splash, rill, gully, and sheet erosion. The first is rain splash. So literally when raindrops fall down, hit the ground, and splash some soil or sediment further downhill. Now this only happens in areas with slopes. Without a slope, the splashes would just fall right back down onto the same land. But with slopes, when a raindrop falls, hits the slope, most of that sediment falls further down the slope and will continue to fall further down with each additional raindrop. The next type of erosion from water is real erosion. So on slopes, again, when there is rainstorms, some of that water washes down the slope and erodes a little bit of sediment. And it forms what looks like small streams, but don't actually have any water of them. Now, if you have a real erosion that lasts for longer and longer periods of time, you can end up with gullies. So gullies are like large rills. They're deeper, they're bigger, and multiple rills will actually erode into a single gully. So with gullies, large amounts of sediments are removed over long periods of time, usually. Now, what if it's not a steep slope like real gully or rain splash erosion? Well, then you get sheet erosion. So if you have a flat or mostly flat area, the water will run off in sheets downhill, and it will also erode and take soil and sediment along with it. So in this case, sheet erosion will take some sediment, wash it down in sheets. The next time it rains, it'll take more sediment and wash it down in sheets. So you will not end up with the landscapes that look like large canyons or even small rills. Now for rivers, they also erode as well. For rivers, their fastest speed is in the middle, but river erosion occurs fastest at the fastest speeds, and there's no sediment in the middle of a river. Where there is sediment is on the bottom and the sides of a river. So that is where the erosion occurs. Now, because the velocity is slowest on the bottom of the sides, it also slows down the amount of erosion that river could have. But this only is true for perfectly straight rivers, and not every river is perfectly straight. So in this case, this river right here is a meandering river. It moves from side to side as it cuts across its floodplain. And you'll notice in blue, the fastest part of the river isn't in the middle, it is on the sides in this case, or at least close to the sides of the outside banks. So as the river comes through and meanders on the left, it cuts the outside bank, then its fastest velocity goes into the middle, but then again, it cuts into the outside bank again because it cannot change direction easily. So what ends up happening is the fastest velocity slams into the side, 
slams into the side and continues slamming into each outside bank of the river. So meandering rivers will actually cut on the outside banks because that is where the fastest velocity of the water is. Now stream erosion can also look something like a dendritic pattern if it occurs in the mountains. And what happens is each stream will feed into larger and larger streams until it forms a river. Uh, usually you have hundreds, if not thousands of different smaller streams that can form one single river, depending on how big that river is. Now there are things called drainage basins in the United States and in other countries. Drainage basins could contain dozens of rivers and each of those rivers could contain hundreds of streams. So the biggest in the United States is the Mississippi River Basin. There are others like the Colorado River Basin, the Columbia River Basin, but this one is the biggest and you can see multiple rivers from this single drainage basin. So any rain, any runoff that happens anywhere in this river basin will come out in the Gulf of Mexico through the Mississippi River. For the Columbia River Basin, same thing, any rain or runoff that happens in the Columbia River Basin will leave through the Columbia River. Uh, 